Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here, and welcome back to another investigation video. So, the Fallout franchise has no shortage of mysterious and strange individuals. From robotic humans to aliens to ghosts, this is a universe that has everything. However, perhaps the most mysterious individual of all is the Mysterious Stranger. Like, that's actually the dude's name. In Fallout 4, if the player has a high enough luck stat and the appropriate perks unlocked, it's possible for a man called the Mysterious Stranger, or MS as we'll sometimes refer to him as, to randomly appear when you're in combat and lend you a hand for a few seconds before vanishing into dust. We can only catch a glimpse of him, but he boasts a stunning noir detective-like outfit, and most importantly, uses a special signature weapon that will take down any creature with just a single shot, making the MS a very valuable ally in boss fights. But who exactly is this gentleman, why is he helping us, and where is he coming from and going to? Well, those questions run deeper than you might think because players have been asking them since 1997. You see, the mysterious stranger has actually been featured in just about every single Fallout game ever made. Or at least every canon Fallout game that didn't get cancelled. From Fallout 1 to Fallout 3 to Fallout 76 to the Chinese-only Fallout Shelter Online mobile app, he's been in them all, baby. And as a result, the true nature of The Stranger is probably one of the franchise's most popular questions. In the past 23 years, literal thousands of forum posts have been made on this topic, and so many cool details have been found supporting various theories and conclusions. Like, there are some big connections to the Institute that we'll talk about soon, and New Vegas basically confirmed The Stranger has a secret son. You get the idea. Honestly, I had always thought this was one of those things that the writers never really had a coherent explanation for. I had figured the MS was more or less just supposed to be a gameplay mechanic slash easter egg without much more meaning. It wasn't until folks in my Discord told me about a certain mission from Fallout 76, which made me say holy mother of Adam, that I finally began to question if maybe there was a more coherent story here after all. And indeed, around a hundred hours of research later, I'm convinced there actually is. And this has evolved into one of my favorite gaming mysteries. When preparing this video, I stumbled across quite a few things that haven't been covered anywhere else. And there are some more recent discoveries by the community that make it all the more interesting. Thus, in today's video, we'll be investigating everything currently known about the mysterious stranger covering his appearances in all of the games, and the unique information they each reveal, trying to piece together the truth behind this oh-so-elusive man. So, without any further ado, let's do further and see if we can solve the mystery of The Mysterious Stranger. Alrighty, so we'll begin this investigation by breaking down what Fallout 3 tells us about the character. I know this may feel like a weird place to start, seeing as he's appeared in just about all of the games, and we'll touch upon each of them, but trust me, let's just pretend Fallout 3 was where it all began. You'll see why I'm doing this later on. Anywho, after the Lone Wanderer had gotten their luck special stat to level 4 or higher, a perk called Mysterious Stranger could be purchased. Once obtained, every time your character enters VAT's targeted combat, there will be a 10% chance for a mysterious stranger man, dressed in that noir detective outfit to appear, and fire a single shot from his revolver at whomever you're fighting, killing them, and then disappearing without a trace. That's it. That's the mysterious stranger in action. He'll be gone before you've even exited Vats. Okay, so who is this feller? Where is he coming from, and why is he helping us? Well, our first clue comes from the mysterious stranger perks description in Fallout 3's player guide. It reads, quote, 
You have a guardian angel, but with a deadly hand cannon instead of wings. Meet the mysterious stranger, aka real name, Farmer. An odd and eldritch entity, said to appear to aid you in combat before you draw your dying breath. Of course, it helps to have said a prayer to Farmer first. End quote. Whoa, what? He's an eldritch entity named Farmer who we should pray to? What the heck does that mean? A description like this seems to imply the stranger is some kind of divine and supernatural being, like a spirit or a god or something like that. It sounds a little far-fetched, but it's not necessarily impossible. We know that ghosts are canon in the Fallout universe, and as we've discussed before on this channel, there are some dark magical elements at play if you know where to look. Who's to say the stranger isn't just an extension of those? Let's keep digging. Our next lead comes from the town of Megaton, one of the largest human settlements in the capital wasteland, that you the player can actually decide to blow up if you so choose, but that's not why we're here. In this town, we can meet a woman named Moira Brown. She operates the local general goods store, and is arguably one of the best connected traders in the wasteland. Though you wouldn't know it by talking to her. She comes across as way too excitable, and doesn't seem well versed in world affairs. Nonetheless, Moira will offer the player a short series of quests to help her gather information for a book she's writing. Got something to sell? Hey, I hear you're that stray from the vault. Oh, I haven't seen one of you for years. Good to meet you. I'm Moira Brown. I run Craterside Supply. But what I really do is mostly tinkering and research. Say, I'm working on a book about the wasteland. It'd be great to have the foreword by a vault dweller. Help me out, would you? If you choose to assist her, she'll give you a unique hat called the Shady Hat as a reward. This hat uses the exact same model and texture as the Mysterious Stranger's fedora, and it grants the player plus one perception and five sneak when worn. Moira fails to explain how she got the cap in the first place. However, many suspect that given the obvious similarities, this article of clothing could have some association with the Mysterious Stranger himself. Maybe this was his old hat that he traded away. Or maybe Bethesda was just reusing assets. We don't know for sure. But still, this is an important thing to note. Now, our last clue in Fallout 3 can be found in the Mothership Zeta DLC. During the events of this expansion, the player is abducted by an alien spacecraft and must make a daring escape back to Earth. Along the way, you'll cross paths with a variety of other captive humans with similar dreams of freedom. One of these fellow human captives you meet is a woman named Soma. She apparently used to be a raider of sorts before being abducted herself, though despite such a brutal past, she actually ends up becoming a pretty valuable ally. Anyway, if the player has the mysterious stranger perk unlocked during the events of the Mothership Zeta DLC, there's a chance Soma may randomly say the following quote. Hey guys, Nate from the future here. So I actually wrote this part of the script wrong and made a bit of an oopsie. It's not Soma who delivers the unique dialogue. It's actually you, the player, who has a unique dialogue choice available after Soma gives you a plan to escape the ship. Take a listen. It's gonna take both of us to get out of this place. They want us alive for something, who knows what. Point is, if it looks like one of us is gonna kill the other, they'll step in to stop it. So that's what we do. We throw a few punches, make it look real, and then jump them when they come in to break it up. Yeah, that's what I've got. I don't see you coming up with anything brilliant, Mr. I've been here five whole minutes. Uh, okay, so does that mean you're in? Alright, I'll hold back on you. Make sure you don't get too roughed up, okay? And you be ready. Soon as they come in to get us, you take them down. Alright, let's take a step back. 
So far, we've learned that Fallout 3 introduces the mysterious stranger in vats, suggests his name may be Farmer, and he might kinda be supernatural, and now it's telling us that he's mingled with other people through Soma. This is an interesting assortment of information, though it's nowhere near enough on its own to draw any solid conclusions. So, we should move on to another game. However, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about VATS, the mode in which the MS is featured. You see, we never get to see the stranger in normal combat. He can only be encountered in VATS, or the Volt Tech Assisted Targeting System, as it's called. Why is that? Well, chances are it's just a gameplay mechanic, but maybe there's more to it. According to the lore, VATS was some kind of advanced technology developed by the volt -Tec Corporation and implanted on Pip-Boys of all of their dwellers. When used in gameplay, it simply allows us to slow down time and shows us the probability of successfully hitting certain targets. The closer you are and the more action points you have, the higher probability your blows will land. The exact science of VATS has been lost to history. We're not quite sure how exactly it works or how volt -Tec came up with it. But maybe there's some sort of connection between it and The Stranger. I mean, volt -Tec was a pretty shady company known for its experiments. It's not totally beyond the realm of possibility that The Stranger is one of their creations. Alternatively, if you want to put on a tinfoil hat, it could be a link to the Institute. Okay, so this probably sounds like a crackpot theory, especially if you're familiar with The Stranger, but bear with me. Fallout 3 featured a popular side quest called The Replicated Man, wherein we'd learn that north of the Capital Wasteland, in the ruins of Old Boston, a secret group of scientists calling themselves The Institute had figured out how to create robots that were indistinguishable from people. Well, one of those robots was so intelligent, it developed free will and escaped from the Institute's custody, fleeing down to the Cap Wasteland. We'd have to figure out where that bot was hiding, and either agree to keep its secret safe, or report him to the Institute ambassador that was looking for him. Spoiler alert, his name is Harkness, and he's the chief of security at Rivet City. He had his mind wiped, so he doesn't even know he's a robot. Anyway, if the Lone Wanderer chose to side with the Institute, they would reward you with a cybernetic enhancement called Wired Reflexes, which would improve your VAT's chance to hit by 10% across the board. Harkness, you say? Yes. Yes, that makes sense. He used to work for a special branch of the Commonwealth Police, after all. And he's right here, in Rivet City? Excellent! I must wait, find an opportune moment to confront him. Thank you for your discreet assistance and continued discretion regarding this matter. And now for your payment. This combat module will directly affect your central nervous system. I think you will find it quite beneficial. This hinted at the possibility of the Institute having some sort of advanced knowledge about VATS, or at least access to a similar technology. How else would they be able to offer such a modification? Maybe they even helped volt design VATS or something. Speaking of androids, the stranger's outfit actually bears a striking resemblance to the trench coat worn by Rick Deckard in the 1982 sci-fi film Blade Runner. In Blade Runner, Rick Deckard was a private bounty hunter who hunted down robots that pretended to be people in a futuristic society. And indeed, the replicated man's side quest from Fallout 3 borrowed heavily from that film and its source material novel. And later on in this video, we'll talk about how it inspired Bethesda in Fallout 4. Now, Rick Deckard actually turned out to be a robot himself at the end of the film, ironically enough. Though he was a human in the books. Perhaps the mysterious stranger is also some type of Robocop bounty hunter. Maybe that's how he moves so fast and is so powerful. Who's to say? Hmm. Well, maybe we'll find some answers in Fallout 3's successor, Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas released in 2010 and is set in the Mojave Wasteland of Nevada in the year 2281, roughly six years prior to the events of Fallout 4 and four years after the events of Fallout 3. In this game, the mysterious stranger returns, 
and is effectively the exact same character from Fallout 3. He looks the same, works the same, wears the same clothes, his perks are the same, literally nothing has changed about the dude at all. Though now, he has a son. Yes, a son. Near the El Dorado gas station, it's possible to encounter a man calling himself the Lonesome Drifter. When spoken to, the Drifter will come across as polite and talkative, and will tell you his entire life story if you give him the chance. Evidently, he was born quite a ways up north, in Montana, to a single mother. His father was apparently a real mysterious feller who was never around, always traveling on his own adventures. Thus, the lonesome drifter and his mother were forced to make ends meet on their own. They each worked overtime at the local coal mines for years until his mom passed away, and the drifter decided to move on and search the wastes for wherever his father went. Take a listen. Howdy there, partner. My story's a long one, friend, and I can't say as it's all that interesting. Well, I was born in a little town out Montana way. Me and Ma didn't have much, ever since my pa up and left. That he did. Never did know why. Ma always said he was a real mysterious fella, even when he was with her. Like he was a stranger sometimes. Maybe. Maybe I just never felt like I belonged back home. It sure wasn't easy. Ma worked her fingers to the bone to make sure we had enough to survive. And I worked the coal mines from when I was 15. After Ma died, I guess I wanted to find my pa and get some answers from him. Been out here looking ever since, but he ain't an easy man to find. Can't say as I really know. Maybe I'll just ask him why. Maybe I'll punch him right in the mouth. Hell, the more I talk about it, the more the whole damn thing sounds like a dumb idea. Maybe I should. Don't suppose you know any place a fella with a guitar might find a job, huh? Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Now, if your charisma and barter skills are high enough, the Drifter will reveal to you that his father did leave him a single revolver to be remembered by, and you can convince the Drifter to give you said weapon. The item is named the Mysterious Magnum and it will actually play the same musical riffs used by the mysterious stranger when he appears slash disappears each time it's drawn and holstered. Aha, uh -huh. so the drifter's dad was the mysterious stranger. Notably, the Magnum does quite a bit more damage than a normal 44, though isn't exactly the one-shot kill we see from the perk. Furthermore, it comes with some unique, flower-esque engravings. Fun fact, Fallout New Vegas' project director, Josh Sawyer, confirmed on the Something Awful forums that Obsidian had originally hoped to create a unique event wherein the mysterious stranger would intervene and prevent you from killing his son in VATS but they ran out of time and just forgot about it. Now, hold on a second. Take a good long look at New Vegas's mysterious stranger. This guy seems to be, what, in his early 20s, maybe 24, 25 years old tops? Yet, he's supposed to be the lonesome drifter's father? How's that possible? The drifter looks older than him. If the player has the Lady Killer perk, the Drifter will even reveal that he's 28 years old. The mysterious stranger doesn't look that age. What's going on here? Well, it's easy to assume that maybe there are just multiple mysterious strangers running around the world, and the one that visits us isn't the one who fathered the Drifter. Problem with that theory is, remember, Obsidian's Josh Sawyer literally confirmed New Vegas' MS is the dad when he talked about that unique event the studio had to cut. So the only possible explanations are that the stranger is a time traveler, or that he otherwise is somehow immune to the effects of aging. 
possibly thanks to supernatural powers or an advanced technological enhancement. Neither of those ideas would be very surprising, actually, as there are multiple examples of people avoiding age in the Fallout universe. In Fallout 4, our protagonist gets cryogenically frozen. We meet centuries-old cyborg men. In New Vegas, we meet cyborg people at Big MT. You get the point. The mysterious stranger's old age is far from impossible. Furthermore, maybe he's not old at all. Maybe he really is 20-some years old, but he's just a time traveler. That would explain why he only appears in vats when our perception of time is radically altered, and how he's able to teleport into thin air. I mean, all the anti-aging cream in the world couldn't make you do that. So the Marty McFly theory makes some sense. Anyway, let's move on. We're not quite done with New Vegas yet. Fallout New Vegas also introduced a new perk called Misfortune that was very similar to The Mysterious Stranger. Here's how it worked. The Misfortune perk is also unlocked once you've acquired the appropriate luck skill. Its description reads, quote, Misfortune is a character that randomly appears in vats to help you out when you have the Misfortune perk. Just when your enemies think they have the upper hand, Misfortune appears to turn their world upside down. Effectively, Misfortune works in a nearly identical fashion as the Mysterious Stranger. Once obtained, it's possible for a woman called Misfortune to spawn in a rather flashy getup when you're in VATS combat. Like the Stranger, Misfortune will fire a single shot out of a 44 revolver. But rather than instantly kill your enemies, her attacks will merely cause them to fall unconscious and or suffer some sort of bad luck event. Like their weapon might break, or if they have any explosives on them, they may detonate randomly and cause damage. You get the idea. So while the mysterious stranger kills your foes, misfortune causes them to suffer some bad karma. Notably, her outfit isn't detective-like at all. She wears a studded red leotard with feathers and a scarf covering her face. Miss Fortune looks more like a dancer than an investigator. Why is that? It sure seems like the two characters are a part of the same club. There could really be a faction of mystical folks out there leveraging these powers rather than just a single individual. Why they dress so funny, we don't know. And sadly, New Vegas doesn't provide us a whole lot more info. And Miss Fortune doesn't appear to have a son or daughter of her own. What a shame. Lucky us, in 2015, Fallout 4 released and the mysterious stranger perk returned once again. Though, Miss Fortune didn't. Fallout 4 was set in the Boston area, six years following the events of New Vegas, and ten years after Fallout 3, in 2287. Now, Fallout Stranger behaved the exact same way as New Vegas and 3's. However, the character himself had changed a little. No longer was he a young-looking Asian man, now, he was a middle-aged Caucasian dude with a caterpillar on his lip. Additionally, his trench coat was now buttoned up rather than left open. Oh, and also, this probably doesn't mean much, but for some reason the stranger carries around a pack of grey tortoises in his inventory, despite the fact that we're not supposed to be able to access his inventory without console commands. I don't know, it's weird. So what's the deal with these changes? Well, many believe that Fallout 4 Stranger is actually the Lonesome Drifter from New Vegas. Maybe after we met him in the Mojave, the Drifter made his way to the Commonwealth and became the new Mysterious Stranger. It's a very fun theory to consider, though honestly it doesn't hold up to scrutiny. The Drifter may have had a similar looking mustache, but he also boasted darker skin, darker hair, and was Asian as well according to the game files. So, this dude is definitely a different person. So, if he's not the lonesome drifter, and he's not the drifter's father, then who is he? 
Well, like Miss Fortune, Fallout 4 Stranger could just be a different person, a part of the strange, mysterious club. Maybe there's a bunch of mysterious men and women running around the wasteland, and this is just another example. Or maybe he's meant to be the same stranger we've been seeing? Bethesda just decided to change his look a bit, without necessarily meaning anything by it. Whatever the case, there's more in Fallout 4 to examine than just his charming mug. You see, in Vault 114, the player could find a magazine titled Astoundingly Awesome Tales No. 7, The Man Who Could Stop Time. And when picked up, we'd gain an additional 5 action points that could be used as extra stamina or in VATS mode. And, oh boy, who's that on the cover? Maybe I'm just reaching a bit, but that dude looks like he's wearing a similar trench coat as the Strangers. Obviously, the faces don't match, but the outfits do. And in the game's files. This magazine cover is actually titled Mysterious Stranger Magazine 01, which erases any doubt. What's he doing here? Well, we're not sure. Comic book covers in the Fallout universe are very, very weird. Sometimes they communicate valid lore-related points. However, other times they're totally meaningless. It's possible the devs put the stranger here just to reference the VATS-related benefits it could offer, and that was all. Still though, with a title like The Man Who Could Stop Time, it does seem to quite strongly substantiate our Time Traveler theory. But wait a minute, as I keep saying, there seem to be a lot of mysterious strangers out there. So are they all Time Travelers? Eh, let's move on. Now, from this point onward in the video, we're going to be looking at a lot of clues related to the Institute. So, I'd like to take a second to briefly run through the faction's history, just so we're all on the same page. The Institute is an organization of scientists living in a giant, futuristic bunker beneath the Commonwealth. Its origins date back before the war. You see, long ago, the Commonwealth Institute of Technology, or CIT as it was called, was one of the world's leading universities and research centers. It's based on the real-life MIT. In the days leading up to the Big Kaboom, CIT's leaders saw the writing on the wall and built a giant bunker underneath the campus that could shield members from danger. Thus, when the bombs did fall, many students and professors fled to the shelters and survived the blasts. These lucky survivors were some of the Earth's brightest minds, and they decided that the end of the world wouldn't stop them from pursuing their research. Thus, while underground, they continued to make science their number one priority. And so did their children, and their children's children, and their children's children's children, you know what I mean. Fast forward 200 years later, and the Institute is still thriving to this day. They are easily the most advanced faction in the wasteland we've ever encountered, and they play a central role in Fallout 4's narrative. The Institute's most famous achievement is the Synth, a type of android that is so advanced it's nearly indistinguishable from a normal human being. One of the big ethical dilemmas Fallout 4 forces the player to consider is whether or not these droids should be treated like real people, and whether or not they may have actual consciousness and self-awareness. The Institute insists that Synths are just robots, without any rights, that should do their bidding unquestionably, and they claim that any who escape or think they're real people are just bugged. Okay, so what does any of this have to do with a stranger? Well, earlier in the video, when we were still talking about Fallout 3, I briefly entertained the idea that the mysterious stranger could be a Sith. And that would actually explain quite a lot. We know some of the Institute's more advanced androids are capable of teleporting, and they could theoretically live forever, explaining the agelessness. There also could be a bunch of similar synths explaining the multiple strangers. Furthermore, remember that crackpot theory of mine where I suggested the Institute could have some association with VATS based on the reward they give us in Fallout 3? Well, Fallout 4 basically confirms it. Within the Institute's main compound, on a terminal in the robotics wing, we can find an entry titled Unique Project, which reads as follows, quote, Overriding directive to not alter our synth's basic function notwithstanding, Father has granted clearance for a rather unique project. 
In select Gen 3 synths, the synthetic brain is indeed capable of accepting specific enhancements to the visual cortex, basal ganglia, and right parietal cortex. The result is substantially improved combat effectiveness due to two factors. One, an increased understanding of weapon accuracy to the extent that the combatant can actually visualize the percentage of effectively hitting targets for smaller areas on those targets. Two, an altered sense of perception that mimics the effect of slowing or even stopping time. Recommend we commence surgery and field trials on appropriate operatives in the near future. End quote. Visualizing percentages, altered sense of perception that mimics the slowing of time, that's VATS, baby. So the VATS-based reward we got in Fallout 3 wasn't just a coincidence. The Institute really was experimenting with this tech. Again, maybe they even had something to do with the creation of VATS. In its own right, this is a really cool concept. But it doesn't quite help explain the stranger. I mean, the Institute is capable of giving their synths VATS, that's great, but we're the ones who use VATS, not the stranger. And there's nothing that tells us they're capable of deploying synths while other people are in VATS. Don't forget, we know that at least one of these mysterious strangers has a son, and synths are, as far as we know, biologically incapable of independent reproduction. Why would the Institute have synths in the Mojave Wasteland anyway? It just doesn't add up. He can't be a droid. Although, there is one synth in the Commonwealth that might know something. Nick Valentine. Nick Valentine is a unique, older synth that was given the memories and personality of a detective who lived before the Great War of the same name. Valentine ended up escaping from the Institute many decades ago and moved to Diamond City, where he started a new life and put his skills to work becoming the settlement's most renowned detective. He plays a critical role in Fallout 4's main questline, as he helps the sole survivor find their missing son. What does he have to do with the mysterious stranger, though? Well, evidently, one of the cases Detective Valentine had been investigating before we showed up was the mysterious strangers. You see, beneath Nick's bed at his home in Diamond City, the player can find a note titled, The Mysterious Stranger. It reads as follows, quote, Case, The Mysterious Stranger. Sightings of a man dubbed The Mysterious Stranger have been popping up sporadically across the old US for years now. Best case, the man's an immoral lunatic. Worst case, a prolific serial killer. All anyone knows is his mode of operation, appearing suddenly, killing without remorse, disappearing without a word. The Stranger has no known accomplices, no clear method for selecting his targets, no calling cards left behind. Sightings range from the New California Republic all the way to the East Coast, stretching back decades. Now, he's come to the Commonwealth. Last thing this place needs is another psychopath running amok. Time to start putting together the pieces to put this one away. Description. Human male. Outfits vary, but most recent sightings describe a large overcoat and fedora. Guy has taste, I'll give him that much. One man, multiple men, a ghoul with minimal scarring, might explain the long passages of time between sightings. Appears and disappears suddenly, suggesting preternatural infiltration abilities slash access to advanced cloaking tech. All but the earliest descriptions suggest the stranger uses only conventional arms, making infiltration training more likely. Perps like this make me wish the Institute had sprung for thermal detection before giving me the boot. Sighting locations. The Commonwealth. Confirmed. The Capital Wasteland. Confirmed. New California Republic. Old rumors. Shady Sands. Really old rumors. End quote. Ah, okay. So Nick Valentine had opened a case on our guy before we showed up. Furthermore, if you have Nick as an active companion when the mysterious stranger appears, he'll say the following lines of dialogue. You! Stop! Damn. Vanished.
What the? The stranger. Slipped right through our fingers. He was just here. You saw him, right? That was him, the stranger. He was right here. Where'd he go? Haha, <laughs> that's pretty neat. Note that Nick is the only character in the game that will react to a mysterious stranger appearance. Nobody else will so much as acknowledge his existence. Now, I had always thought that this was where Valentine's relationship with the stranger ended. I.e., all he was doing was investigating the character, and there is nothing more to it. Bethesda probably just put all this in as a fun little easter egg or whatever. However, what if there was more to it than that? Isn't it a little funny that the stranger and Nick dress so similar? Heck, Nick's outfit looks quite similar to what the MS wore in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Also, remember how I mentioned the mysterious stranger carries around a pack of grey tortoises in his inventory? Despite the fact we can't ever get into his inventory without using console commands? Well, the only other person in the game who carries grey tortoises around is, you guessed it, Nick Valentine. Furthermore, in Fallout 4's game files, we can actually extract the exact scripts used by the voice actors for all of their lines. When we look at Nick Valentine's scripts, we find that Bethesda told the voice actor the mysterious stranger was his quote-unquote nemesis, not just an ordinary suspect. Admittedly, script notes aren't exactly canon, and there's a good chance Bethesda told the voice actor this just because they wanted him to sound as surprised and dramatic as possible. Oh, yeah, and Vault 114, that place where we find the astoundingly awesome magazine with the mysterious stranger on its cover, well, that just so happens to be the same place where we meet Nick Valentine for the first time in the game, as we have to rescue him from some bad guys here. So, Nick was running an investigation on the stranger, he dresses the same way, he carries around the same pack of grey tortoises, in the game files he was told the stranger was his nemesis, and we meet him in the same place where we find the magazine. By themselves, I think any one of these little coincidences could easily be written off as accidental and meaningless. Though, when you put them all together, it gets a little creepy. Some players have proposed that maybe the mysterious stranger is the original Nick Valentine, i.e. maybe he's the detective Nick got his mind from. What if somehow that original dude managed to survive the Great War, and discovered some sort of time travel slash anti-aging tech that allowed him to continue living for the centuries to come? Nick himself tells us he has no idea why the Institute chose some random cop to put in a synth, what if there was something special about him? My memories, my personality, they're all lifted from some cop who volunteered for an experiment back before the war. They scanned his brain and copied it onto the hardware that runs between my ears. Don't know why they chose to make a robot based on some pre-war cop instead of a math genius or a bioengineer. Nick was a hell of a cop. A guy with good instincts and a good heart. Alternatively, ignoring our earlier points, the stranger could just be a more advanced synth that uses the same mind as Nick Valentine. But again, we'd have to ask why he was following us around in the Mojave and whatnot. It's so weird and frustrating. There's so much that connects the mysterious stranger to Valentine and the Institute, yet the lore seems to disprove all of our theories. One might say there's a lot of smoke here, but no fire. Which is what makes what I'm about to say so frustrating. As you probably know, Fallout 4 currently has a marketplace called The Creation Club, where players can purchase paid ma, I mean mini DLCs, from Bethesda. In 2019, The Creation Club got a new mod added called The Noir Penthouse, priced at 600 credits, or roughly 6 buckaroos. The Noir Penthouse's main selling point was the new, noir-themed apartment player home it offered. However, before we could obtain it, we'd first have to complete a side quest. This side quest would begin when we heard a mysterious signal play on our radios. 
When followed, the signal would lead us to a dead Institute courser dressed in a very familiar outfit. Yes, this is the same damn set of clothes worn by Nick Valentine, just with different coloration. On the dead robot's body would be a unique 44 revolver called Early Retirement, as well as a few holotapes that would explain everything to us. Sort of. Apparently, the Institute had created this synth to destroy slash recapture escaped robots, and he went undercover in Diamond City, taking up the role of a detective to gain the locals' trust so they could tell him more information. Huh. This guy was pretending to be a detective in Diamond City. Sounds a little too similar to Nick Valentine now, doesn't it? Furthermore, there's actually a custom script that came with this mod, which allows Nick to wear the same detective outfit, something other characters can't do. Now, the Institute had apparently provided the robot with a full penthouse in downtown Boston to act as a base of operations and a place to rest and relax. The player could steal his keys, and then the apartment would be all yours, effectively completing the quest. Obviously, it's very weird that the Institute would give one of their androids a full apartment, seeing as the things literally don't require sleep or relaxation at all. They can just teleport back to the Institute if they needed that anyway. And in this condo, there's a luxurious shower, comfortable furniture, a luxury kitchen. All things synths really don't need or want, and stuff the Institute definitely wouldn't be providing. There are also Diamond City newspapers in the home that were created as late as September of 2287, suggesting the dead courser we just saw had been active around the same time Nick Valentine had been. Why didn't we hear anything about him? What the hell is going on here? How did this courser get his own condo? Why does he dress and behave so similar to Nick? What does this all mean? Well, probably nothing. You see, the content uploaded onto Bethesda's Creation Club isn't always canon. In fact, more often than not, it isn't. According to Bethesda, they try and make most of their creations at least consistent with the lore, but they know that doesn't always happen, and we shouldn't take this stuff too seriously. Furthermore, it also seems to be another Blade Runner reference. You see, in Blade Runner, that movie about the Robocop bounty hunter we talked about earlier, the concept of killing robots is referred to as retiring them. So when Bethesda provided this courser with a unique revolver called the Early Retirement, they were referencing that film. And this courser detective may even be a reference to Rick Deckard or one of the fellow characters. Thus, we should take all of this Creation Club stuff with a grain of salt. Let's go ahead and move on. We're not totally done with Fallout 4 yet, but it's time we talk about the most recent game in the franchise, Fallout 76. A game everyone loves, Fallout 76 takes place in the year 2102, just a couple decades after the bombs originally fell in 2077. This is by far the earliest Fallout game ever made, and the mysterious stranger returns once again, this time appearing the same way he did in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, with a similar face. Seeing as Fallout 3 and New Vegas take place literally around 200 years later, this basically confirms the time travel slash aging theory. This guy is definitely very old or a time traveler, no matter what, but I digress. Now, the thing that caught my attention so much in Fallout 76 was a location called Riverside Manor and the Order of Mysteries faction. Let me explain. At Riverside Manor, a large, well, manor in the Fallout 76 map, we could learn the story of Frederick and Shannon Rivers. Frederick River was a pre-war inventor and businessman who had acquired an astoundingly large fortune and he was a huge fan of the Silver Shroud comic book series. The Silver Shroud was a pre-war comic book superhero who dressed in a actually fairly similar outfit to the Mysterious Stranger. He wore a black fedora and black trench coat with the occasional red bandana thrown in. 
In the comic books, he protected the streets from criminals. Using his signature Tommy gun, he would take out some of the biggest threats to Boston. The Silver Shroud's partner in crime slash life partner was his wife, the Mistress of Mystery, as she was called. In Fallout 76, we would learn that Frederick Rivers had essentially turned his wife into a real-world Mistress of Mystery before the bombs fell. He outfitted her with some of the greatest equipment money could buy, built a gigantic training facility, and even purchased a pre-war advanced US military mainframe called Cryptos to run his operation on. Funnily enough, it seems Frederick never bothered to turn himself into a real Silver Shroud. He was just sort of living vicariously through his wife. Anyway, I digress. After the bombs fell, Frederick and Shannon stepped their whole game up tremendously, as now actual raiders were threatening the innocence of Appalachia. Shannon started running around, assassinating raiders and scavengers that committed crimes, and in many ways was now effectively an actual superhero. Notably, she wielded a unique 44 revolver that apparently the comic book character had used as well. Also, Frederick provided her with a special device that allowed her to effectively disappear whenever she wanted to. This device was basically just a stealth boy modified with some hallucinogen gas, but you get the idea. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. In many ways, it seems like Shannon was starting to resemble Miss Fortune from Fallout New Vegas. But there's more to the story. As time passed, Frederick and Shannon started adopting numerous girls who had been orphaned from the Great War. They eventually ended up adopting something like 20 kids, and they put those children on the same training program as Shannon Rivers, effectively making all of these little girls mistresses of mystery as well. They named this new faction of theirs the Order of Mysteries. Now, sadly, for all intents and purposes, the Order of Mysteries seemed to have collapsed before we, the player, had arrived. One of their members had betrayed them to the Raiders, and Shannon, as well as numerous higher-ranking members, were killed. Though, there were many survivors. And we don't know what happened to Frederick Rivers. His fate is left ambiguous. You can see where this is heading. What if Frederick had survived? And what if he decided to become a superhero himself? Maybe he would end up finding himself a fedora and trench coat and getting one of those unique 44 revolvers and start fighting crime. We don't know. In Fallout 76, there's this entire little quest line where the player can kind of join the Order of Mysteries, despite the fact that it's dead, thanks to the Crypto's mainframe being reaccessed. It's some weird stuff, but it really makes us wonder. Maybe Frederick rebuilt the Order of Mysteries and this time started allowing men into the ranks. And more boys and girls joined and all of a sudden, a bunch of mysterious strangers were born. Considering what a great inventor Frederick was and how wealthy he used to be, it's not unfeasible to imagine he may have even developed an anti-aging serum or something to that effect after the Order of Mysteries had collapsed. Who knows? This is personally what I think probably happened, if anything. The Mysterious Stranger story is so jumbled and convoluted, I'm not even sure if Bethesda has a coherent idea of what they're trying to tell. But I think if there is an explanation, Frederick Rivers is it. I think after the death of his wife and the collapse of his order, he moved on his own, picked up a fedora and trench coat, and restarted anew, this time perhaps accepting boys in his organization, and building from there. But wait a minute, Nate. You said we were going to talk about the mysterious strangers' appearances in all of the games. We've talked about 3, New Vegas, 4, and 76 now, but what about Fallout's 1 and 2? How come I haven't mentioned them yet? Well, simply put, I don't think either of those games necessarily matter. You see, while the mysterious stranger was definitely featured in Fallout's 1 and 2, which released in 1997 and 1998 respectively, in these games, he wore a set of road leathers and looked more like a greaser than a detective. He also didn't appear in Vats, because Vats wasn't a thing until Fallout 3. Instead, he'd just be a random ally we could encounter if we had the right perk. Furthermore, the original version of The Stranger didn't have a custom 44. 
Instead, he used a random weapon based on the player's level. And he could even die in battle if allowed to take enough damage. That's right, you could lose your stranger, and after he died, he'd be gone permanently. In many ways, the stranger of Fallouts 1 and 2 felt less supernatural, and more like just a normal guy who wanted to help you out. What made him change from that into the godly detective he is now? Well, I suspect it's because Fallouts 1 and 2 were made by a different game developer than the rest of the franchise. The classic Fallouts were made by Interplay Studios, not Bethesda Game Studios, who currently owns the series. I suspect Bethesda and Interplay had two very different ideas for what the mysterious stranger as a character should be, look like, and what his backstory should consist of. Thus, I'm hesitant to read too deeply into it. Furthermore, even if we do consider those games seriously, all they really tell us is that there might be more mysterious strangers and that the strangers are technically mortal. Which is great information, but it doesn't necessarily prove or disprove any of our theories. So, again, I'm kind of skeptical of its significance. Thus, here we are. It's been nearly one hour since we began our investigation, and we still aren't really sure of who the mysterious stranger is. I provided my theory that he is related to Frederick Rivers and the Order of Mysteries, but that's still very far from confirmed, and we've went over so much conflicting information that doesn't seem to point in any one direction. For example, the references to him being an odd eldritch entity were just never touched upon again. We don't know why he's associated with the musical riffs. There's still so much that hasn't been explained, and so much we'll probably learn in the future. Thus, this is where we are going to wrap up. Thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. What do you think the truth is? Do you think the mysterious stranger is one man, multiple men, an entire group of people, a time traveler, an anti-aging person? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.